Today is all about I, Tanya, the 2017 mockumentary about Tonya Harding's incident with Nancy Kerrigan. Expect a twist in this episode. You won't see it coming. We are the good, the bad, and a just plain standard podcast. Pump it up. Hey, salut les amis. Hey. All right. Um, how are you? Good. Good? All right. Yeah, yeah I'm good. Okay, okay. Um, the, the, the way we... I personally work on those episodes, so I watch the, the film and I take notes and I avoid going a search uh, on Wikipedia now. I stopped like 10 episodes ago or something because uh, I feel that bringing stuff uh, from nothing will obviously be fresh because it's not been said anywhere before. Uh, which makes it that sometimes I don't notice things, uh, just like uh, the fact that Martin McDonough uh, wrote Hangman. Yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, that's the play that was at NT Live uh, to one, one year ago, something with Andy Nyman as uh, Sid. And it's funny because the play was done in three different places. Um, it started at the Royal Court with... Uh, uh, Reese Shearsmith as Sid. Oh, nice. Then when it transferred to the West End, it was um, Andy Nyman. And it came back to Reese Shearsmith in the Broadway uh, cast. Excellent. New York Broadway. He's great. Yeah. <laughs> what other uh, Broadway would there be? Off Broadway. Actually. Off Broadway. or I'm sure you could say you're in a Broadway play if you're in a, like an LA, surely. Hmm? I always is thought it, Broadway it, was. Um, yeah, I, was is it just? One place. Is it just New York? I don't know, but I, I, that's just my opinion. Well, I know it's a massive long street. Yeah, and it's only in New York, in my knowledge. Okay, I don't but, know. I thought there was a Broadway in uh, LA, but oh, might be. You might be right. I mean, I don't. I don't think so. Think, this is yeah. like there is a West End in Glasgow and in uh, London, but uh, I think the. I think uh, there's a West End in most cities. I mean, they call it West End. It might be a British thing, though. Mm. Yeah. So today is all about uh, I, Tanya. Starring. Margot Robbie, Sebastian Stan, Alison Janney, Caitlin Carver, Julianne Nicholson, McKenna Grace, Paul Walter Hauser, and Bobby Cannavale? 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 I'm going with the... It sounds Italian. There is absolutely a Broadway in LA. It's the mate that's there. Oh, okay. Cool. Which is also theater? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good to Broadway, know. there's Los Angeles theaters. Ah, yes. Mm. Broadway theater district. There you go. Nice. So New York and LA. I think Broadway is how we say West End theater. In Britain, Britain we have like, most theaters are located in one area. They'll Just, say the West End. Yeah, they'd say theater land. Well, it's a thing that in America there are multiple places with the same street name. You're right. Mm. Uh, yeah, so that was the cast. So, uh, I noticed that one of the producers of this film was a uh, being, you know, it's a um, TV, a sports TV channel. Right. I was like, oh, okay, that's... that's well, it, make, it makes sense because the director, Gillespie, is from Australian commercials. That's where he began. That's, oh, where, yeah. that's where his background, they spent like 14 years doing commercials. Maybe that's how they met. Most Margot people, Robbie. Yeah, most people will know him... Uh, his film he did an interesting one that I want to see called um, I think it's called, it's, a, it's it stars John Hamm and it's about how they bring a, a cricket team to play baseball right it's a Disney film oh, not right. an animation that you know how Disney is like a live action studio yeah uh, it's one of them he also is he did the remake of Fright Night with uh, the recently passed Anton Yelton oh yes as the lead the, in that the David Tennant yes David Tennant uh, as the antagonist role yeah, I haven't seen that yet, but um, no. I've seen the original Fright Night. And I'm, I'm, I like, I like Fright Night. Yeah, yeah, I do. Well, yeah. That, I've only seen the one new of these one. 80, 80s pieces. Yeah, I know that she also produced it. Oh yeah, yeah, Margot yeah. Robbie. You want to know a fun fact? This is Margot Robbie's first lead role. Yeah. Uh, I listened to the Simon Mayo interview uh, a couple of days ago after um, seeing the film. So I always do that. I keep away from reviews or interviews, and then. If I if I think there might be something to add, comes out in that that this is her first lead role. Uh, she's been offered other lead roles, but this is the first one she's taken herself. 
it's really good like she it 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 was such a it was so well done and really tough role to take on as well like so many facets of that character and i think she was absolutely flawless it's always the thing when you play a real person yeah of course yeah of course but it's also just the way that it was styled like it's a mockumentary it's kind of black comedy but it also breaks the fourth wall like and she's tough but you have to kind of pity her at times like there's like a whole array of emotions that you go through and that's a really tough thing to portray do you mean for 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 documentary or spinal spinal tap it's called mockumentary as well is it yes because i thought spinal tap is more mockumentary as opposed to four documentary as um as half documentary style uh this is known as a as a black comedy mockumentary okay Mm. um Alice and Jenny, the uh, mother, mm. uh, she got the Best Supporting Actress Oscar. Yes. Margot Robbie also won something, didn't she? No. Nope. No. She's nominated. Nominated. It's Frances McDormand that took all these, all her categories. They're the same, they're the same category. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, it was well-deserved. She was very good in it. And we're going to talk about politics of the East contest, it's... If Margaret, this is Margaret Robbie's first go at a lead actress in that category, then they weren't going to give her it. If you believe in the politics of um and it, that quite links into the actual overall theme in here as well of um acceptance and uh, status quo quite a lot. I felt that was a very arching theme of I Tonya. Yeah, I, th- I, I yeah, I mean it, yeah, okay. I think you have the, your time. Like sometimes you're like rising star and that's your year. Like Jennifer Lawrence had her year and, and she got quite a lot of roles probably off the back of that. Um, so I think there are times when an actor will get a lot of roles because of that. Like they're, you know, it's like the first time that Oscars have been like, Oh yeah, yeah, you're an amazing actor. And then suddenly they're just everywhere. Well, I guess it's the, the, do you have the faculty to be in that position? I mean, once you've been highlighted in that, in that, in that way, in like a lead actress or a supporting actress, um, it then opens a door to people going, ah, okay, she can handle this sort of thing. Um, I've, we should talk about the elephant in the room here, which is, um, the whole suicide squad debacle. So the last time I think I saw Margot Robbie was suicide squad. I know she did, um, uh, it was like a follow on to, uh, Christopher Robin, not to be confused with um, the new one coming out this year with um, Ewan McGregor. Goodbye, Christopher Goodbye, Robin. Yeah, goodbye, Christopher Robin, with her and Daniel. What you you do his name so well, Daniel Gleeson. Yeah, that's it. Because uh, somebody somebody in the Simon Mayo interview uh, wrote an email to them and they they called him Abdominal Gleeson. Right, that was spelled like that. Oh dear. Uh, which was I found quite amusing, but yeah. Um, so yeah, and I mean. <clears throat> Suicide Squad's a whole other cat and a whole other bag of name your animals, you know. Yeah. it's uh, She redeemed herself a lot since then. Well, I had the confirmation that it's clearly a studio thing because I watched um, David Ayer's next film on Netflix last week, uh, Bright, and I loved it. Really? Yeah. Because mm. apparently that got, I remember that getting just shit on when it came out. People saying it was the worst thing ever. Um, wow. I haven't seen it, but I won't pass judgment. And I've seen people that we we know yeah, love it as well, um, but I, I I won't judge because I haven't seen it yet. Mm. Yeah, I've only heard good things about this this film, Itonia. Like I haven't had heard a bad review yet. So I mean, this film had a lot to play with because people are always a bit biopics are always difficult because you can either do an amazing biopic or it's it's like rubbish. Well, biopics mm. are a very fickle thing. You you were not you around. Know. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on. Either way, go, go, just... no, no, I was finished. Okay, and uh, no, um, yeah, but you were not around when this happened. No, of course not. No, I was. I remember, uh, even though I didn't give a shit at the time, and I still don't really give a shit. Uh, I remember about the Harding, um, Carrigan uh, thingy. Really? Yeah, that it was a yeah a big uh, a big thingy at the time. Which is the the point of uh, this film? <laughs> yes. Sensational sensationalism sells papers. Yeah, and um, that kind of the the little monologue that uh, 
Tonya Harding or Margot Robbie has at the right at the end when she's in the boxing ring. It's basically saying that like America loves to hate things and love things and have an opinion on things and voice them. And it kind of forgets that, you know, you, you are a person yeah. and like, of course you make mistakes and she didn't actually do anything wrong. She was just connected to someone that was, and I, I also feel like it's slightly elitist probably. I mean, this is all opinion, mm. but I feel like because she was already a controversial character, it probably didn't lend itself to, you know, her getting back to figure st skating or getting, you know, carrying on in the second Olympics and um, being able to figure skate ever again. Like, ugh. I get it. I get it. It's like, you know, she, she as as Adam was saying earlier, like they made an, a, an example of her, well, but it, it just seemed really hard. What well, sport you have to. I mean, if you let one person slide, then you have to let them all slide. It's like um, the land in the same category. You remember how for years upon years upon years that Lance Armstrong just categorically denied everything about. Um, and maybe we'll cover the, not the movie version of that event, because it's okay, but there's a very good documentary that I think won, actually, about um, Lance Armstrong. I think it was called The, the Armstrong Lie. Mm -hmm. I'll double check that, if that's mm -hmm. his actual title. Yeah. Live Strong. Uh, yeah, of course. And it's, it talks about that whole, that league. But obviously now, that, that opened that massive gateway that was doping. I mean, even... Even more recently, we had the whole um, Russian, the whole Russian Olympic team being banned in every sport because of their a allegations of doping. Of course. You know, like it opens a way. I mean, you can't let something like that slide, even if, if it wasn't her fault, like it was all orchestrated by people that were looking out for her and like in a perverse sense of like, I'm trying to help you win by ruining your competition. Um, she was too closely connected to it. So they had to kind of cut her off completely. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you got to be accountable for the people around you, you know, like your immediate team. Like, for example, um, is it the case when you see somebody in high media and like one of their aides do something and you're like, how did you not know about this? You know, like you're you're accountable for the people around in your sphere because surely you would know. And I think that's yeah, that's like, a big thing in our society. Even yeah. if you are not, for example, let's say, for example, um, I don't know, let's say a friend of mine uh, committed a crime uh, and a close friend. I People would assume I knew, mm -hmm. you know, it'd be like, especially if it was to hurt someone in the acting industry to get, to yeah, let you get ahead. Like that probably didn't make things any easier that Tonya Harding seemed to be able to do better. Well, not do better, but like go on and still do the things that, Nancy Kerr Kerrigan she could have been able to do um, when she'd just been and, and and also it was very um, aggressive because it was like um, break her knee so that's like not just beat this woman up because it's someone connected to figure skating it's like I'm going to break her knee so that she can't skate like it's very isolated and specific so no no I've that's probably why it's it's so unfortunate because it's just how do you get away from that? Yeah, obviously she recovers and she gets to carry on her career and Harding's is over. Yeah, it's really sad actually. Like that that monologue um, when she's at in the court and she's just had her sentence given and she's just in shock and crying and saying just give me the jail time. Like I'm happy to to take that time and serve my time like I'm willing to pay for it I just you know it's all I can do is figure skate mm. and I think that's it was a really tough thing to watch especially because I know what it's like to only want to do one thing and if I didn't have acting in my life I don't know what I'd do so I could totally relate to that feeling of like fuck if the law was basically saying you're never allowed to act again that's that's a bigger deal than a qu probably quite a lot of people understand mm. Mm. So it's a lot more of a tragedy than someone that doesn't have that kind of passion would realise, I think. Well, I think that's why people, that's, that shocks most people that she wants the jail time. Because, you know, there's an audience going, you're like, you really want to do the jail as opposed to this. I think when you care about something that much to have that just so just taken away from you completely. I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's like worse than death to, some, to most people. Being 
when when creativity and in her case athleticism and ice skating is your is your outlay in life especially growing up in this world where it's all you've done your entire life i mean to have that taken away is just and against the odds as well like can't afford any new things has to sew her old costumes up and she doesn't look the part and she's slagged off for it and <laughs> mum is abusive boyfriend's abusive everything dad leaves like this case i mean she had it is that i mean the film showed that this woman had absolutely nothing in her life except for this one thing and then her unbelievably sexist prick of a boyfriend decides to ruin that for her for no fucking reason it's just like oh man and she, I, I it actually sort of made me angry because the whole thing about this film was like oh this is a story of a figure skater who decided to hurt one of her teammates and that's how people remember the story and that's really sad but that's because that's the way the story has been presented to us not in the film in the media sense that's how i um Tonya Harding is portrayed. Yeah, and that's I just I just mean that's sad. If anything, everything in that film was true, that's tragic. The interesting thing that this film does is that it, it starts with the credit title saying this is the unironic, you know, it's it's a multiple account. And uh, there are things in it that contradict each other. Even we have fourth wall breaking saying she did this or this didn't happen. I think that's quite interesting because the film doesn't give us this is this person's story. It's from multiple angles of it. Hmm which um, is a really interesting way to do something, especially when it's based on somebody's real life. Because I'm with something like this, where it's a an, an incident that is reported in a way and seen in a way to actually go, right, what kind of happened? Can we find correlations? Are there complete misrepresentation? Is there all of this? I think it's, it's one of the most interestingly displayed biopics I've seen in a while, actually, because... Usually with a biopic, you know the story you're going to get. Like, for example, if you watch uh, the James Dean one, uh, not the recent one, because that, um, was, that was the one with they did it. It was about Dennis Stalker, the photographer, who was played by um, your man from Twilight. And, uh, Robert Patterson. Robert Patterson was Dennis Stalker. And I can't remember the actor that played James Dean. But anyway, that was about that. There's an original, original the first one I remember is the one with um, James Franco. But you know where that story is going to be, right? Or a Marilyn Monroe one. You know, or if you get a Marlon Brando one, you know, like these stories or even like Jackie Kennedy that we had last year uh, yeah. and Jackie. We know these stories that we're going to get with this one. It's interesting because we know what we've been given. But do we know what actually happened? And I know that this film is based on both um, the husband, uh, Jeff, and based on Tonya, their accounts of it. They couldn't get in contact with the, the mum during the filming. So... Uh, it's based on their accounts of her and then what other things they can find, which I find interesting. That, and that, it shows in the narrative. I mean, you both have interviewed these um, 4 by 3 esque 90s-style television shots of uh, almost like interview footage that, where the documentary sense of this film comes in. And uh, when both people are on separately, or even more interestingly, when they come on and say lines at the same time together in sync... Uh, you know, it's more interesting because you're seeing multiple sides for it. You're like, remember in 2015 when Making a Murderer, 2016, is it 15? I think it was 15 because I think I watched it the, the, the Christmas before I started ACS. Mm -hmm. um, that was huge. And people were like, I can't believe like this guy wasn't found innocent. Mm -hmm. But of course, we only ever got one side. You know? Yeah. Yes. Um, yes, we heard that together, didn't we? We watched the, um, was it a podcast or was it uh, it, was a, it was the gym. It was a radio show in America, I think. Jim something. Uh, I'll, fi I'll find it and link it. But it was uh, Ken Kratz, the, the prosecution for the state. Because uh, he brought out a book saying, look, this is, um, this is what happened from me and this is my view on it. And uh, I think the major thing, that, the thing that let Making a Murderer down is the sense is like they excluded the the whole defense side uh not the defense side the uh prosecution side uh to make him look innocent completely well they yeah they crafted a narrative because it worked for their documentary and mm -hmm. that's not okay really yeah because their whole side was um we like an underdog um and we know that people like to you know um love the underdog um and also it's kind of 
fashionable to mm. hate on the police more so no, that was yeah. like they used that and abused it badly and no i'm not i'm not saying that um make you i'm saying that i don't like making a murderer because of their choices they if they're making a documentary you should have both sides that's fair unless you present unless in your documentary you want to present one side and that's fine but you can't present that and not like it when people call out saying this is only one-sided if it is one-sided you are one-sided uh, yeah i think the biggest crime that making a murderer does and uh, you can if you look into it and you find out there are pieces of evidence that they left out and they say it's for time's sake um no but i'm like I, no but it's you've crucial gotta, you've got to have the, all this stuff in there especially it, if you're a 10 part 10 hour series you it, know it's crucial evidence as well it's not just like little bits like that you're not supposed to care about it's definitely taken out because you're supposed to f want him to be innocent mm. and be disgusted that the police um found him guilty um so yeah i quite liked how in itonia you get all aspects of the story and actually in the beginning it does look like she's completely guilty and the guy is is like a victim in all of this and it slowly comes through while you're watching the film that actually it's kind of the other way around that he kind of manipulated and abused the situation and she's kind of a victim in this she's not totally it's, it's not victim but she's not completely victim they're both flawed Less. and very flawed individuals. So that was interesting. <laughs> that was interesting. Yeah, like they they they, they kind of switched it, and I I quite like that. That in the beginning he's like, yeah, oh, uh, like she hit me, and oh, it was awful, and everything changed, and she hated me, and and it's all her fault. And then it kind of, and she's like, oh, she's a bitch, and fuck everyone, and everything's so. Oh, and it's all attitude and like I'm a redneck, I'm white trash and I'm fucking proud of it and it was a bit like oh well I don't like you immediately and I kind of like this guy who kind of comes across as a victim that's the other thing I found interesting is the whole they did not for better or worse play or show a stereotypical what people think of like redneck I, I quickly forgot or just didn't really acknowledge I knew she wasn't what well, for example, like Torval and Dean, which is if you think ice skating in Britain, you always think of Torval and Dean. You know what I mean? Like, I have no idea who that is. You know but... Torval and Dean? No. Tor the was it the Ber Berlano or something like that? Yeah, they did. They did a big like figure dancing routine, and it was huge. And it was like, oh my god, this is amazing. But they were like, you know, what what I what Tonya wasn't. You know, I I actually this was one of the first times that I was watching something, and throughout I was making notes. Like usually I make notes afterwards or like the day after or whatever, like but I was actually watching it for the first time and making notes throughout. And um, I actually wrote quite a lot. <laughs> Why don't you share some of us? What stands out to you the most? I mean, usually we're like, should we have a plot summary? I mean, everyone, if you've seen this film, you, you know, it's a, it's a historical piece. Yeah. Um, I think what was nice was th that it wasn't stereotypical like there were the way that they showed certain aspects of who she was were it wasn't stereotypical mm. it was like you know li little things like um you know you know okay so you know you know when people um direct or script something so that the audience knows who that person is mm -hmm. and it's like it just sounds like exposition or trying too hard to like show a person of who they are. It's like two in your face. I quite liked how subtly it slowly in each scene brought you closer to who this person was. Yeah, how um, like Marvel spend years and years and years world building in films. It's called well, character development. Yeah, you know, like you develop somebody, and they, by the end of it, you know who they are. Exactly. Yeah, um, and obviously you're going through her life, and so there is a little bit of exposition but it it didn't feel forced and i no. think that's quite um genius like that's probably really hard to do storytelling at its you know top form i'm currently uh, in the middle of writing a blog about i call it the 90 minute question whether you can you present a film in 90 minutes and the idea is you know how most people uh come home after work or something and they just want something that's in 90 minutes so that you know they don't have to they can do other things that evening if they want to sit in and watch something after dinner and get some work yeah. done stuff like that um 
This this one curious to me as in the process of writing that because this is about a, it's a two hour twenty sort of odd minute movie. Two hour, I think it's a two hour mark. Yeah, it's it? two hours five. Two hours five. Um, but the pacing is is on point, and it's the thing. Even going back to when we talked about Call Me by Your Name, um, that film works as its length because it's like a different sort of journey. You go on this like summer with them, like this time period of somebody there for about probably like two weeks or something. But um, here it's it's. It's that steam engine sort of like moving forward, like slowly gathering pace. And by the time you get to the main incident of what what everyone knows Tonya for, you feel like it's built to this moment. And it's like, right, OK, let's get to this part of it. Um, I was equally as entertained getting to know her as I was the major incident of her life and what makes her Tonya Harding. The the Tonya Harding as opposed to Tonya Harding, the first woman to land the triple axis, you know. Axel. Axel, sorry. <laughs> Triple Axis. Um, yeah, or the person that uh, broke her colleague's knee. That's what I mean by the, the Tonya Harding. In, like, the, yeah. yeah, because, um, yeah, and actually the, the woman worked really hard and against all odds and that's really hard to do. And, and I, I think actually it, it's quite rare for someone to go through so much physical and emotional abuse um, and kind of still do it anyway every day six to eight hours a day i mean that's that's more than dedication that's just i mean some people might call that crazy <laughs> like that um that's a whole new like love for something and there's only a f um, handful of people that have that dedication um so she kind of deserves the fact that she was the first woman to ever do a triple axel mm. Because it's like, well, yeah, because she puts so, so much time in it. And she can't. And um, one of the most um, awe-inspiring parts was that she um, she had to job. Yeah, of course. Yeah, as yeah. well, because yeah. she, she just she can't afford to do any of this stuff. Um, I, I actually stumbled on an article where the actual Tonya Harding says that, one, I do not swear that much. And two when margot robbie goes to the judges and says i demand you to tell me what my why my scores are that like that she was like i would never do that that is so unprofessional so there's a little bit of sensation in the is, film is that the bit where she says um suck my dick yeah yeah i read a bit i read this i might have read the same one where she says i wish i'd said that but i didn't say that yeah sort of i think she did say uh, it was she, like in the hallway but it wasn't like in front of people in the stadium yeah, yeah like, of course yeah and it, and i don't think she said suck my dick i think she said stay out uh, my face she's out every, my face yeah everything yeah, that but, yeah, in the scene is there except for the end but she's like suck my dick yeah at the end and there's a reason though as well because actually it sounds like in real life they were a bit more cold like it wasn't an underhanded insult of um you, you, you just look at the way that you present yourself it was more like why don't you buy yourself some new clothes well let, yeah let's look at the cold hard facts here figure skating is an is a very is a high tier sporting event i'm by which i mean access um for example i always like to think of it there's a great advert by Nike or Nike right now uh, about Londoners, uh, where it shows like all the different aspects of uh, being a Londoner and working hard for it. So, example, it's like you think that's hard, and it will be somebody saying, "Have you ever tried to play tennis in London?" And it's like storm blowing in the face, or there's just one guy going, and it'll be like, "Nobody plays ice hockey in London." Like it's a very good advert, and it and it does ask the question of accessibility. I mean, I grew up in um in Dunfermline, which is a uh, a fairly large town. I wouldn't call it a city. Maybe a small, a very, very small city, but I would say town. Uh, and I managed to do, I did a bit of gymnastics when I was younger. I did swimming. Uh, I tried to do a bit of rugby, but I got into it too late. But there was never really any access for something like figure skating. You would have to be in Enro, which has like an actual ice rink uh, near yeah. Murrayfield, you know. Ice rinks are quite rare. Or you'd go maybe um, like at, for a party or yeah, something, yeah, but yeah. It, it, it would never be there to, the education to like do it as a job or mm. do it every day for hours and hours is just not there. Um, and possibly because it seems so specialist and it's it's so hard to do in the sense of it's so hard to do well. Mm. Um, 
And because it's seen as kind of like a fun hobby thing, I think a lot of people don't really think of it as something that you would, especially when you come from a, a, a family like Tonya Harding's who'd yeah. had no money whatsoever, are completely um, abusive. So there's that kind of family home where it's like, oh, fuck off, you know. You don't have that support group. And yeah. I think you you kind of had that at home. Like your your parents are very supportive of who you are and what you want to do in life. Yeah, well, to break it down into truth, it's, the, it's the, all to do with distribution of wealth, right? If you have the means to support something outside of your basic need to live here, pay bills, heat the place, school, like these sort of things, right? Once you pass the mark of having like an expend, an outgoing income, then yeah, you have the you have the ability to seek out hobbies and interests. Um, I was lucky that I I did have those opportunities, and my parents supported me very much to do uh, find whatever suited me. And I tried a lot. Of, I tried a lot of things that I just didn't stick with. Uh, which actually brought it was bringing me to another point I wanted to make about Tonya that there's a persistence in in her as a human being, which I hope is true to the actual Tonya Harding of it. No matter what, she is going to do this. Uh, I remember. I remember being at school and uh, I just really discovered music and uh, I was like, I, I chose, I'm like, oh, you know what, I'll give drums a go. Because there was a time in music where you got a shot at the drum kit for the first time and uh, everyone like lines up in a line and they all go on and have a shot and it's like some people you just can't pick a rhythm. But I remember getting said, as like, I couldn't do it, but the guy's like, there's potential here. And I heard that and went, right, okay, I'm going to give this a go. So I went off and learned, you know, how to be drums and I was, I was okay, but... I um, <laughs> I got kicked out of a band by a, f a friend, a girl that was friends with other people in the same band uh, just before a maths exam in about S3. It wasn't, it wasn't like a huge exam. It wasn't like if you f I'll fail a qualification, but it was like, it was a pretty f feasible exam. Like it was in a hall and I kind of just gave up drums after that. I was like, you know what? I'm not going through this again. I'm not why bother putting my effort in when, you know, it's not going to pay off. And uh, that's a lesson you learn. But she never has that moment. I mean, her moment is that, you know, when the judges are like, you're just not, you, we don't want you to be the face of this. And she's like, no, I'm going to do it. So you have to give this woman credit, even though she's famous for an incident, the, the persistence of somebody to go through constant rejection, that's, that's categorical rejection. That's like, we don't want you. This has nothing to do with your skill or your background Actually, no. It's everything to do with your background. It's like you don't represent the face of ice skating for us. Mm. You're not a poster child, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's what was sad and, and actually quite refreshing because you don't really get that part of people saying, what happens to the people that don't win mm. and don't get gold and silver and or even bronze? Like, obviously, Tonya Harding did very well and first woman and, and all of that. But there are time and time again she was fourth yeah, yeah, of course, or yeah. less. Mm -hmm. So, and that's when she would go and have, you know, she'd have to go to a job like every day, 6 a.m. type thing. And she, and that's just a really nice line. Like, yeah, what happens to the people that don't have the endorsement deal? There are, there is no endorsement deal for me. So I have to slog. And because my family can't support me at all, mm. um, I'm, I mean, and I think that's the thing, like, there are loads and loads of people who don't have that family that can support them financially. Of course there is, because not everyone can, but it's a support of like love and care and attention and, and believing in mm. your children is actually a lot stronger. Like I totally understand that like if your parents can't support you, it's, it's 50 times harder. Or don't approve. Yeah, but, this... but that's the thing. It's like don't approve or don't doesn't don't give you the emotional stability. Like that's like I I would say that's even harder than no financial stability because if someone believes in you, you are probably willing to get three jobs and also do acting or figure skating, whatever it is. Do you I mean, know what yeah. I mean? Like, but if you don't have that that your family or at least like a good support network that's when it becomes even harder and that's probably why she, Tonya Harding is at someone that you everyone should probably be in awe of all right let's swing it around to the mum bringing it on to the uh, support means because oh, bloody hell because <laughs> this is the argument here that um the mum makes her the competitor that she is the feisty constant you know uphill battle I'm going to fight for my cause 
Because the argument is, it's like you think about Michael Jackson, for example, as his father, the the countless att- the things about making fun of Michael's nose and all the insecurities that he left him with. But it's like if he hadn't done that, would he be Michael Jackson? You know, well, Do- look where Michael Jackson ended up. I know. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that is the in a way is these these people in the perverse sense saying I am supporting you. I'm not saying their support is in the right way or implemented in the correct way you know that won't have lasting effects on on somebody you know um i mean you could argue that the the way the mom her mom treated tonya it turned made it capable for them to harbor the idea of um creating the incident you know oh yeah because that that's kind of that mentality i'll do anything to win sort of thing uh, yeah and and i'm you know i swear and I, I i pick bad men who are also abusive and you know maybe someone who was a little bit m- more educated in that way mm. would never have gone down that path of like yeah let's send her death threats oh i don't care like i'm just skating and, and yeah i'm not going to talk about this right now and then you know beating each other up so violently <laughs> and sadly in the sense of uh, the mom hits the nail on the head halfway through the film when she, get ma- she gets married to jeff and she says this is essentially like this is the worst thing you could have done this is the this is unbelievable you've been so stupid you, here you fuck them you don't marry them yeah 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 that's that and the and sadly by the end of the film you're like the mom's right if she hadn't married this guy this incident probably wouldn't have happened and that, that's actually the first time you see the mom smiling that's true says that I mean, it's totally screwed up because even though someone's right, it doesn't mean that they were right. Like if someone's lucky enough to be right, doesn't mean that the things that they were doing is right. I feel like it had nothing to do with her mom. It had nothing to do with the boyfriend. I think Tonya did well because Tonya wanted to do fucking well. I'm not saying that either. I agree. I no, agree. no, I'm just saying, I, I'm just saying out there in the world, you can put my fucking stamp on it that... um I don't think anyone else did it. I think she did. I don't think her mum helped her at all. Probably made it much worse. And Tonya isn't, you know, the person that you think of when you think of figure skating. It's it's strange because you see all these reality shows now. It's like dance mums. And you see all these, like, really odd parents that are, like, super involved in their kids' careers. And uh, Tonya's mum isn't even that. You know, like this, I want it because of me which is the sort of idea you get with these sort of mothers. It's it's just kind of who she is. And I think that's what makes it interesting because you have what you would assume is like how you would support somebody and what you'd think you'd be like in that situation. But it is genuinely interesting to see something that you just can't imagine yourself doing. And I think it's portrayed so bloody well. Like, Oh, yeah, she definitely deserved that Oscar. It was harrowing and actually... I the whole time I was watching it, I was having difficulty remembering that this is a film. And I know that it is based on real life. Of course it is. But like watching it, it was like I found it really tough mm. because it was like I'm watching this kid grow up in this horrible environment. And it's like oh, fucking hell, like everything that came out of that woman's mouth was just poison, like abusive and manipulative and just totally fucked up like you took all my money from me and it's like what that is a so screwed up thing you could say to a child well 20 year old mm. like all my yeah. money went on your skating and it's like well but i was like four years old like what what were you expecting me to do no mother you worked really hard on that i'm not going to take that from you like what it's it's almost like she's she hates her own child for the fact that she isn't doesn't have more financial stability i don't even i think it might also be a thing of like when when money becomes something that it needs to have a value or like a worth to it like if you're if you're in a situation where you need to get the most out of something i feel there's an aspect of because tanya isn't winning these tournaments she's like i'm wasting this money yeah i think that's where some of it comes from i could see i can see a correlation to that in my opinion and I, i mean i kind of understand that like if you don't know how to like if you don't know how to channel your anger and frustration in life how it can go that way it becomes a case of like you don't buy a racehorse for it to finish fourth you know and it's and it's like it's almost that mentality of like all right this is something i'm putting money into because i'm you know because of the future 
as opposed to I'm supporting my own daughter because she wants to do this as a hobby. Right. So if she's an investment. Correct. That's that's well, that's bang on. We get that super early on when the whole oh let's send her to school to double the photos so we save some money. I'm like, yeah. As a manager, that would make total sense. Yeah. And the first time that her mum comes and says, I support you and I'm proud of you and I love you, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, there are people out there that actually support you and she's got a fucking recorder in her pocket. Mm. I read like, on the fact check that doesn't happen in her house, but that did happen. It was like at a nice rink uh, during a training thing that she came and did that, but it wasn't like in the house. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that was quite a clever twist that they did because it's like in her own home there are paparazzi outside and it's the first time when it's like it's the one thing that I think Tonya wanted so much to have this like a kind of acceptance from her mum or at least for some part of her life to be proud of you know mm. and it's the first time that she hears it and they hug and it's so nice and then it's just like she just smells a rat when she's like yeah so did you know anything about it and you're just like oh my god when opportunity knocks that sort of thing yeah it's so fucked up though it's just like and and the whole thing when the guy's like screaming at her saying you suck and it's the mum paying him off <laughs> like just all these little things it's just so much like w what good is it and what like what <sighs> So the other thing, the other major thing in this film that is entertaining that you can't miss out is the whole orchestration of the incident and how super chaotic and just backwards the whole doing it is. Oh, it's ridiculous. Um, you know how in the film they show the guy moving the car every 15 minutes? That isn't true, but he did move it every 30 minutes. So he did. So he did do that, just not 15 minutes, it was 30 minutes. Oh That's God. the level we're dealing with here. Um, That's so embarrassing. That interview that Eckhart gives, the Sean, is true. Really? Yeah. All of that is Well, at is the true. end, it shows, yeah, it shows the, the real, real guy. guy yeah, and it's just saying, unbelievable. I'm like a master in espionage and criminal. I would never oh. rat you out, but oh yeah, I'm in a bar like 20 minutes later going, oh yeah, by the way, I, I'm behind all that. 60 grand to pull that off. <laughs> It's the sad example of somebody locked away for years, just wanting the 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 highlight, always being the background. I mean, he's met his friend, even though he's kind of a like a very abusive, very abusive husband and not a nice person to be in a relationship with at all. Um, he's a very attractive man, and he, unfortunately for Eckhart, he is not, and he has probably been in the shadow of this guy for years and wants his moment in, his, in the sun and to him this is his moment in the sun i'm the guy that orchestrated the whole i the tonya moment you know i know it's like enjoy your bad press until you're spending 10 years in prison yeah or andy warhol enjoy your 15 minutes of fame yeah you know? yeah that the whole sequence it was nice there, there are a lot of this film is is nicely shot uh there's some nice steady calm and moments to show this like chaos and disarray and a mix of like you know tripod sets and everything that Everything that you would expect to see in a, in a decently made film uh, there as well. Yeah, and nice um, panning shots as well, mm. like towards um, the face of someone just to uh, like shaky cam almost like yeah, makes yeah. you feel like you're there and it's raw and it becomes a bit more kind of about I mean, human emotion, what that person's going through, like hell pretty the, much. The Jaws effect. Exactly, yeah. the Jaws effect. Um, and I quite like that um, when... Sh Tonya Harding leaves him probably for the sixth time or whatever <laughs> and um it goes through the house and each room that it passes he's in a different state mm, that was nice, of yeah. the div of the of going through his the divorce period or whatever yeah like without editing without cross you know uh, cutting it was just like no, just yeah, fluid the, the edited long shot to make it the continuous shot sort of aspect yeah exactly yeah. Uh, and then it pans out of mm. the the driveway and it kind of gets faster and faster and faster like God, just getting crazier and crazier it's i mean funny. the thing that i i reminded me the most is a lot of the stuff in this reminded me of baby driver in a way actually of the style of shooting especially when it comes to the the ice rink and the skating scenes, especially that. Because uh, I couldn't work out where the camera placement was because I was like, there's no way somebody was skating with them doing it, you know. Oh, yeah, they might have had like a panning track, you know, when they like put a On a crane cam or something, yeah. yeah. But it, it didn't feel that steady. But, you know, it just had this nice little, had this nice real rugged feel to it. Like it was going, like you were on a track with them, like you were 
almost like the skater was a train, you know, like you were going with the carriage and so forth. I really, like, I, I enjoyed that a lot. Yeah, it was very um, shocking as well. Like sometimes the, the colour scheme would be like very bland and um, kind of nothingy and then there'd be like a sudden shock of colour. Yeah. I want to give a shout out to Anna Malkova and Heidi Munger, which are the two skating doubles for the film. Um, oh, wow. Uh, I specifically stopped the credits to go right. I want the names because it's very... In a film like this, it's hot, it's easy to get wrapped up in the drama and everything, but forget that you somebody had to go out and do that, uh, which links into the, the segue of uh, CGI in this film. Uh, it's a bit hit and miss for me. Mm, yeah, CGI isn't great in this film. There were moments where I was like, well, that is not happening. <laughs> like, And, for, I mean, budget was 11 million. So in a, in a way, that's not that much when it comes to Hollywood budgets, but it's still a budget, you yeah, know, like, I, I don't know. It's kind of like, I, I don't know how much CGI is and whatever the process is. Like, I'm, I don't know, but it just seems like, why did it, why was it so fake? The, uh, well, it was, I thought, less fake than the moustache. But uh, yeah, you felt like the slow, the trip axle uh, slow-mo and most of the skatings i didn't i only noticed something was weird or off during the slow mo one the rest you don't really all the scenes where they're skating they they mapped her face onto the other ones i mean they did but the I, thing, I think the thing that screws, it was so fast i think it screws it over is the fact that you see the actual margot robbie on in scenes that she is on the ice like when there are stand still scenes on the ice that is her there and the contrast between that and her skating is just, I think I want, I think honestly, most cinema goers won't notice it. But I think if you watch a lot of films, it, you might. I honestly do think it's to do with your awareness of CGI that might do you over in this one. Well, and sometimes you don't because um, Harney Hammer had his uh, bowl re removed with CGI in Colby My Your Name because of the shorts that were so short that he always had uh, on film his oh. balls. Uh, that you could see. Oh my God! Really? Yes. That's crazy. Yeah. So there, there is CGI in uh, Call Me by Your Name. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, it might just be. No, no. I, I actually totally disagree. I think that them mapping on mapping on is quite a good phrase. Um, them mapping on the, the face of Margot Robbie, young Margot Robbie, or now. Um, I could just tell that they'd mapped it on. Like it just seemed really fake and I was not really sure why because it's, you know, it was made in 2017 last year and I've seen so much better CGI moments in films over the past few years even. So I'm not sure why a film that came out yet last year was so bad. Um, I think it wasn't such a problem because the film was really good. Um, but I think, yeah, I, I, I just thought it was just very obvious that it wasn't her. So that was my, that was one thing that I, I, I don't know, I'd found a bit problematic. Mm. Editor was a woman, though, which is very exciting. I thought this was a very good um, getting a decent woman role in film. Yeah, very. Um, it was really good. Really enjoyed it. I would definitely recommend seeing this film because it was just, I, I cried. Yeah, you did, yeah. In it. Mm. I definitely cried. And I I laughed too and cringed. And there were moments where I wanted to storm out because I was so angry at her husband. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, history is full of bastards. I know. Get that on a t-shirt. Mm. Yeah. It's uh, it's funny because, so I, it's definitely, we talked many times before about mood when you watch something, right? And I took some notes about some stuff that I liked uh, I didn't really find any major points that I disliked, but uh, yeah, I, I I agree it's a good movie, but I, I didn't like it at all. Really? You didn't like it? Yeah, yeah. I was not entertained. Really? Yeah. Ah, oh, what a shame. I picked up on small details that reminded me of other stuff that I really liked, like um, the Romeo and Juliet, Dire Straits song. Yeah, oh, we'll get to the soundtrack, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is uh, in a very good scene in Empire Records. I was like, ah, that's nice. And it was just those, some little touches of different stuff in there 
But um, so, what turned you off then? Well, <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, maybe because we're an hour in and Jan hasn't mentioned that he dislikes the movie. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's a uh, that's a twist for you. Oh Jesus! And because I, I'm not sure why, but I was uh, listening carefully to what you were saying, and probably because when Anuki said that you didn't feel it was a film with actors but real people, and I'm not really uh, crazy about documentaries. And it was, I think, uh, the right amount of different to be good, but also the right amount of different for me not to like it. I, 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 I'm not sure exactly why, but... Do you think you'll ever see it again? No. No? You're, like, <laughs> no. not even going to try to see it Yeah. Fair. I mean, fair enough. I mean, so, so it was the fact that you could appreciate it as a good movie, but you just didn't enjoy it personally. Mm. Is that the case, then? Yeah. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. That's why I also adding a, a something with a rating to help locate because it it will be a good, but with a kind of a different thing. Yeah, attached. like personally, I didn't enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure there are loads of films like that where you know it's a good film, but you just it just wasn't for you. It's not your type of genre. You found it boring. Blah blah blah. I mean, there's just that thing of people saying, "Oh, you've got to see this." And yeah, you're like, exactly. "Yeah, no." That happened to me, but get out. People are like, you've got to see this movie. I'm like, I'll see it. Oh, yeah, I'll see it in time. And it happened Did for you me. Not like it? I haven't seen it yet. That's, that's uh, what I mean is like, people say, see this. And I'm like, don't tell me what to do. I'll do it in my own time. <laughs> yeah. Like, people did that for me. Oh, The Wire. The Wire is amazing. And then I'm like, yeah, how great can it be? Then I watched it and went, oh my God, this is. This is gold. I know. I, I mean, I did the same with Breaking Bad. Like, sometimes it actually makes me not want to see something when people are like, you have to go see it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, well, exactly. I'm not going to see that for a long time now. Thanks. It's just the type of person that I am. Um, and I started a movie podcast, so that's going to have to change, of course, <laughs> because it's now going to be, you know, people telling me to see things. I'm like, yes, I have to see that now. Mm. Um I'm really confused why you didn't like this movie. That's a shame. It's probably because there was one thing I was always extremely annoyed by, and it's actually quoted in that film. Everyone has their own truth. Mm -hmm. Someone says that at some point. And I believe that's the biggest bundle of crap that you could ever say, because uh, there are facts. That's the truth. And... Uh, I said my truth. Yeah, well, I don't give a shit about Oh, you truth. mean at the very end where she's like, this is my truth. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I, I wasn't really a fan of that line either. And I don't know if that, like, if the director believed it either, because, I mean, I'm not really sure if you're supposed to like her and, you know, want to be her best friend. Like, I think she's quite a controversial character mm. in itself. So I... I kind of, I do agree with you. I think that is bullshit because there are lots of people that I've met that have been like, I believe this. And it's like, yeah, you can believe that all you want, but that's because you're guilty because you're bullshit. And what you're like, the, everything that you believe is wrong because there are facts and like just, but I think that's quite a nice thing to know that you are right, I think. And just because someone doesn't believe you. <sighs> I think it's a very therapeutic thing for when you tell somebody the truth, even if they believe you or not. Yeah, because when you know like, oh, what happens, you know, you, you feel something. And I think that's a fundamental key in this story. I mean, I mean, throughout time from the 90s, she's always been accused of like not telling the truth, you know. But because in, in, in the phrasing, I was telling my truth. Uh, well, uh, uh, wait, I was this again. Well, anyway, you like that? telling your own truth is that the people are so delusional that they actually believe. So it became, it becomes facts, and that's that's insanity. That is insanity. I agree with you, and I think it 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 is a very strong thing that if you believe something so wholeheartedly, it's so easy to like make it fact in your own head. Yeah, we've discussed this before, the fact that nowadays you can find a justification and a, a source of evidence to back you up on anything because of the internet, yeah. because of our access to information. I know. Any any philosophy can be backed up by something. You'll find somebody out there that will agree with you, you know? Well, think about the people that believe that the world is flat still. Oh, yeah, that was the one we talked about, yeah, flat earthers. And, uh, That's a justification. I mean, and, and then people that believe that you know, like 
racists, that there are inferiorities between people of, of different skin colour. That's crazy. There are just things that most people can't make sense of to these things. Um, I wonder if, Jan, that you don't like the phrase, this is my truth, because a lot of people use that phrase, this is my truth, when they want to use it to spout their own agenda. Yeah, yeah. That's mm. that's why you just like that phrase. Yeah, that's the main reason. Um, but again, uh, there uh, there are be- there are really nice. Uh, I, I really picked on on specific little tiny things instead of <coughs> focusing on the on all the filmmaking stuff. And uh, I didn't even see most of the except the music, which was really uh, yeah. Soundtrack nice. was banging on us. I, like there were emotional moments, and I'm like just hearing Fleetwood Mac. I'm like yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like uh, the mum was like. Uh, my storyline is disappearing right now. What the fuck? Uh, yeah, the, yeah. I, that's quite interesting uh, stuff, but it was just really specific little moments that I really, really enjoyed as a novelty, kind did of you, like, like a treat to give to a dog. Did you of. feel that your lack of enjoyment in the film led to you not looking for things in it? That you just like, all right, whatever, I'm just going through this because I'm going to review it. Yeah, so I switched idea. off. Um, that's possible. I, I took notes as I was going through, which I don't necessarily always do. Uh, we, we talked about that yeah, with the poll, that you tend to be over um, as in assessment mode constantly. Instead yeah, of I, don't, actually... I don't take notes when watching because the first time, I'm going to watch it the first time I need to get my base enjoyment. I need to understand um, even... Cr- also, I watch so much now and I, my mind works in a way that I can watch something and assess it at the same time. And then maybe a second time, if I'm going to watch it a second time, I'll pick up on other things that I wasn't looking at the first time. Yeah, I think it depends on the film. Like I yeah, found true. it easier to make notes on this because, as you said, it was more of a documentary in a way than a film. Like I'm sure like Coco, for example, I would have found really difficult to take notes on it because I was watching a film. Mm. But because this felt like I was watching someone's life, I didn't feel bad kind of writing down like, oh, that's interesting. And it, it kind of felt like I could, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Disassociate. I must say it's always good to see Sebastian Stan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> he was very good in it. I hated him. And I think that was that was the point. <laughs> yeah. You see him as a broken man in the in the interviews as well just not well i mean you get the end credits that he's satisfied but the portrayal the film gives us is like he's not satisfied i mean yeah and he admits the fact that he ruined her career and actually that was quite a nice closure for me because it was like yeah well i'm glad that you know that (laughs) (laughs) because i feel like she gets a lot of stick and obviously her name is on the card so that's the person that you think about when you think of the scandal but actually there are other people that were involved and that's so important and so i feel like that maybe is what she meant by this is my truth Mm. but as soon as i heard that and that's this is why i agree with you jan i kind of switched off because i was like well go fuck yourself like i don't really want to hear that which which is good but i that's the very last thing yeah exactly (laughs) exactly it's like oh okay well but i i disagree with youtube i think and i think that perfectly sums up who she is as a person yeah but that that would kind of added to the fact that me and her probably won't be friends because if someone is so delusional into thinking this is my truth and i don't give a fuck about everything else i think that can cause a lot of problems in a relationship yeah yeah okay Mm, I also like the fact that uh, Jeff, the boyfriend, had some uh, Tommy Wiseau moments. Oh. We had a, I never hit her, that's not me. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, we did, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, do, do you have any favourite quotes? Let's go with that now, so then. I think that's just like the fact that the, the mum had a parrot. Yeah. And the, that's and, just... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't... I, just, I like that. Um, Eating my ear. Emotional support animal. Yeah. Um, really odd. You well, that's quite offensive, but uh, I've never heard that. I've never heard that, that before. Uh, you skated like a graceless bull dyke. <laughs> that's specific. That's very yeah. specific, and very angry, and doesn't really make that much sense. It's just like okay. <laughs> and also, pa- parents of um, high-level um, sports people. Uh, I've watched Molly's game. A few months ago, and her father, because it's on on real life of uh, Molly Bloom, who started as a skier, uh, so apparently it's also something uh, parents with people uh, working either on ice or snow. Mm-hmm. Um, he was very tough on uh, his um, 
right. daughter. And he, he was, uh, because I'm not sure we know what uh, the mum here was doing with her life, but he was, uh, he is or was a psychoanalyst. Oh, really? <laughs> Yes, that yeah. would that will be tough. Yeah, Eddie the Eagle's dad didn't want him to be a a, a, a ski jumper. Right. You remember that in that film? Yes. Ain't yes, no yes. son of mine going to be jumping over thing. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. cat watch? He didn't sound like that. I'm just doing Northerner accent. He's not even Northern, I don't think. I just think him. I always think of disapproving parents, like no, no, like Billy Elliot. No, no, ain't no son of mine going to be dancing. No. But this is why it's quite funny because when when parents are like. Oh, I I want my daughter or son to be high achieving or do well. I mean, your kid's probably going to do well more if you don't be so awful to them. Mm. Like, I, I kind of understand if I mean, you have to have a harder hand if, if you want them to be that high achieving, like mm. the best yeah, figure yeah. skater in the world, of course. But I think there's a level of respect and support that you kind of need to give people because otherwise they're not going to give them back to you. And... Then you get people like Tonya Harding who are angry and pissed off and the type of person that, you know, who, when she 23. gets punched in the face, she'll punch you back. Yeah. That's something that you don't see in film, actually, which I found quite impressive, that she was like, oh, you punch me, I'll punch you fucking back. And they oh. kind of fought each other. Yeah, like Mildred. Who's Mildred? <laughs> the uh, the mother in uh, Three Billboards. Oh, well, yeah, exactly. Like, just kicks I'm not one man in the nuts, kicks another woman in the area. Oh, that was hilarious. Oh, wow, that was shocking. The sea punt. Like, oh my god, <laughs> she just um, kicked her in the pussy. I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, kicked her in the pussy. I think it's Dave Chappelle. Uh, quite weird when a film has to remind you every half an hour that the the, the protagonist is a teenager because she looks like she's thirty. Yeah, it was like, I'm 23, mum. And I was like, whoa, what? <laughs> like, really? <laughs> mm. I know. Something that maybe Call Me By Your Name should have done because he looked 45 in that. I'm sorry. <laughs> but that's that's a different podcast. That's a podcast for another day. Yeah. So I feel that we're right, coming quick to the close of to I, Tonya. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I just, I don't know if you know it because, you know, there's this difference between uh, inspired by a true story and based on real events. Mm -hmm. Ah. Yeah. I'm not sure what this one, if it had a tag or... Well, I know there, are, there is an autobiography by Tonya Harding and another uh, writer called The Tonya Tapes, which is her account. Actually, if you go into Amazon.co.uk or .com and you look for the second edition, the second edition, which is longer than the first, uh, came out at the end of last year, is available on Kindle Unlimited. So if you have that, you can get a free read. It'll cost you nothing. And there was a like an ESPN sort of documentary called, I think, Gold, The Golden something. Uh, actually, I think it was called The Price of Gold. Uh I, I could be wrong. I think it's called that, but I don't know what context. But these are other things. But I don't believe that this film is based off of those two things. No, I believe this is its own work. I mean, it has a it has a writer, you know, as opposed to an adapter. An adapter. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. mm, mm, mm. That could be quite interesting to read, actually. Mm. Uh, okay. Yeah. So shall yeah. ask the question. So. Uh, yeah. Just before you do that, <laughs> every time you yeah, like, oh wait. No, no, no. It's just about the rating. The, so to, to help, because every time we've been talking about either good or middle good, uh, low good. So, uh, we'll have a chart probably at some point, a uh, visual one. But I, I decided at least for my, uh, ratings to add a, a flair because I was watching perfume the other day and, uh, Jean Baptiste Grenouille, uh, fine uh, nose guy. Uh, reminded me, uh, which I would give for this movie, for instance, uh, the flair would be an adjective which would help uh, categorize the movie in their category. Uh, so uh, perfume would be good, fascinating. Hmm. Uh, this one, for me, uh, will be, and you can ask the question now, with a flair. <laughs> Anouk Jan, was I, Tonya, good, bad, or just plain standard? Anouk? Shall I ask Jan first? Yeah. Jan? Good, overrated. Oh, really? Yeah. Why? Because it was the Oscar nominated? I don't think it would ever really had a chance at Best Picture, but I wouldn't say it was overrated. Uh, because it's again, uh, because it was, uh, you, you, you were, you were, uh, 
asked to like it because uh, you were just asked to like it. Yeah. Again, no, I, 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 I get that. I get that. Um, you weren't, yeah. It wasn't a film that was brought out and then you were kind of, what do you think? It was like, best film ever. This is, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I understand that. Um, Anik? I really enjoyed it. I'm thinking now, so I'm, I'm, it's harder to say that it was just good, but I, I really enjoyed it. I thought there were moments of, of really good filmmaking in it and editing and, um, color. Um, mm. and I think Margot Robbie did such a fantastic job. I think acting was like so flawless. I think Alison J- Jan, Janney, Janie, um, definitely deserved her oscar um i'm not sure about an adjective though you don't have to give it a flair that's just jan's thing <laughs> that's almost like a good but and this is yeah be yeah. worn down like this that yeah had. or or and. and good and yeah <laughs> good and overrated jesus <laughs> it was yeah i think i think it was it was it was good okay um i i think that this film i actually think right that a problem we have nowadays is that something comes out and like most things in life, things when they age, they either age badly or they age well. Um, I do think that this film will age quite well. I do think that this will be one of these films that will be remembered. Sports movies are very difficult because there are classics like Field of Dreams, which is an absolute beauty of a film, but some people might not enjoy it. I don't know if Anouk would personally enjoy it or Moneyball for that matter, with Brad Pitt about uh, a baseball team. I think sports movies are incredibly hard to do. And I think that, I think this is the only way that you could tell a story like uh, Tonya Harding's without being biased. And for that reason, this film is a very good film. I think it does. And I also think it gives it, it, in a world right now where there are lots of females wanting to have films that have female leads with a female story to tell, with a message, I think this covers quite a few of those boxes. Whether the yeah. message is positive, I mean, at the end of the day, Tonya Harding worked hard, and what she did, what she did, or our our partners did, uh, eventually caught up with her. But it didn't mean she didn't work her arse off to get there. I mean, she made the Olympic team. I know she that, deserved everything that, that she got. That alone is like that's incredible. That's a sheer determination. So. And the idea that we are meant to be covering movies with uh, empowering women, I think this falls into that category. And I think this is a very good film. I think maybe I'll watch it. And I honestly, there are lots of things in this film I like. It might not be a masterpiece. It might not. It might. It'll never age to the point I'm like with train spot and I have an affinity to. But I think it's a very good movie. And I would highly recommend it to anyone to watch, to be honest. I think... I always go by, could I tell my parents, you could watch this, and my mum would sit through the entire movie, because my mum has a habit of just getting up and doing other things. Huh. And I think my mum would say, sat down and watch this entire film, I think she would be intrigued and wanted to see how it panned out. So yeah, I would give this um, a good. And I'm also thinking, because I saw um, The Battle of the Sexes, which is another movie that came out at the end of last year as well, um, Billie Jean King and that story. And I think this, I think this was better. I think it told a different, they tell different stories, but... And the idea of sporting movies in the last year, I think they're both very good, but I would, I would, if somebody said, do you want to watch Battle of the Sex or do you want to watch I, Tonya? I would watch I, Tonya, personally. Mm, mm. And that's my two piece. I do think Jan is being a bit... No, but I, you, think over, I think overrated is a bad flair. You, you uh, actually said the words, uh, ticking the boxes. They pushed too much on the marketing on the ticking the box thingy, and that's uh, movies should, be, should not be about ticking boxes. Well, yeah, no. I understand your point and I, I understand how you can feel that way. Like, I, I don't know. I don't think it's overcritical. What do you mean? I, I, I don't think that Jan is being overcritical of the film. I think that's a no, fair totally thing agree. to say. No, I totally agree. Yeah, I can totally feel how he feels and I understand no, that. No, I just mean that, that it's okay. Yeah, of course it is. We'll still be friends. We're still, yeah, we won't, this won't be the last I'll, episode of the podcast. I'll no, not no, move no, out. No, of course not. I'll, I'll um, move out of the flat. I'm just really curious how Jan watched this and thought, like, you know, it's overrated. I'm like, I mean, this is the this is the thing. I'm like, should you go into a movie, never watch a trailer, never watch anything? You know, like that. That's a legit question. Should should all marketing just be my films out? Go and see it instead of seeing like these five stars. 
incredible, awe-inspiring, jaw-dropping, all these, like, you'll see the, like, the sun, the guardian, the heat, whatever. You'll see all these on posters, on buses, on trains, on the TV, on your YouTube ads, all these things. And I think for some people, they go, oh, whatever. Like we just said, and, like, people say, you've got to see this. You've got to see Breaking Bad. Like, oh, fuck off. I'll watch it another time. And then you sit down and watch it and go, oh, my God, it's Breaking Bad, right? I think, I think what happens with Oscar films is that they get wrapped up in this hype in this ball. And for some people that annoys them and it turns them off. And I think that's what happens with Jan. Yeah. I think that, I think that there's some things that, um, for example, I am deliberately staying away from anything to do with Infinity War. <laughs> and you know, they just brought out an Instagram post. It's like, please don't spoil the movie. And I'm like, of course, never spoil a movie. Yeah. Well, we get it. Don't be obvious. Like, yeah. Marketing can be your biggest plus or your biggest minus. And it, you know, I know it's people. getting more and more clever as well, like it's starting to get a kind of manipulative and psychological warfare. And it's just like hmm. this is it's, it's getting a bit too much. But and also I, I think we should stop thinking that just because something didn't win an Oscar or didn't do this or didn't do that or didn't get any awards means that it's bad and it has yeah. got no recognition like the majority of people that don't recognize a film as a film as a good film. It, it that doesn't mean that something shouldn't be seen and admired and reflected on anyway. Like yeah. you know, there are probably lots of films that won Oscars that sh probably didn't deserve it at all, but mm. because they've got friends in high places and it was their year to do well, and you know, Harvey Weinstein wanted this and this and that. Mm -hmm. Like I know, we should kind of protect we need to remember that this is a business guys it's got mm -hmm. nothing to do totally. with talents most of the time and the marketing campaign changes after the oscars i mean as soon as it gets oscar nominated they, they just quickly flip, flip the switch now it's about the much most anticipated movie it's like oscar nominated nine academy awards all that sort of thing i think that's a very integral part of i think that's the danger that comes with oscar nominations you know some films will you'll be like oh my god this is great and sometimes you'll be like, no, but yeah, I don't know if I, uh, yeah, I, Jan, I, I don't think this is overrated, but I, you know, I understand what you're, where you're coming from. I, yeah, I, yeah, it's, it, it's, it was not for me. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. I mean, Brave wasn't for me mm. and I called it bad mm. and that's mm. just, and I'm like, yeah, I just, this wasn't for me and I just didn't enjoy it, you know? So yeah, everyone, everyone is floated by different boat mm, uh, but, and, uh, but i am the boat that is floated differently to you i was engaged but not not enough to actually care really yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and to, uh, get, getting on trailers again i haven't watched any uh infinity war stuff but i've been watching some comic stuff uh which is a bit spoilery but the the like it's very disrespectful to directors and the whole uh to, to actually spoil uh, the 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 thing in the in the latest stages of the of the yeah. of the of the marketing campaign, uh, it was pretty obvious when Ryan Johnson said to all his fans, "Please don't watch the latest trailer before you go watch the movie." Yeah, totally. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm. So that was a uh, I Tonya. Yeah. Do you also want because in the latest episode I introduced the Into the Vault segment? So is there a movie you'd oh, like to talk about uh yeah. okay yeah so i was thinking about so legendary is is not won't ne then necessarily be movies that are uh transformational for you mm. but uh the the vault ones definitely yes so you want me to put something that uh, is close to me in my heart does it have to be something we've already talked about or, nope, or it could nope. be anything? Well, I mean, the ones that we choose that we've already talked about, like train spotting and alien, you know, that, that they are as important to me. But, um, you know, my first one into the vault will be, um, will be the original land before time in the, in the eighties, the cartoon that was the live theatrical film. Um, I don't want to put that down. I want to put that in. Nah, I changed that actually. Put, um, put chicken run in. Okay. Check and run. If I'm going to go for an animation that changed my, my view on something, let's go check and run. And we'll talk, we will talk about chicken run one day. I guarantee that. <laughs> Chick yeah. Oh. Do you want to watch chicken run after? I'll need to, yeah. But I'll need to think about what films were really important to me as a kid and growing up. Um, What's yeah, that's actually very interesting. Um, You'll be next week. Yeah, probably those German ones like Metropolis or. Mm. Yes, <laughs> yes. Fritz Lang. <laughs> M. Uh, oh. 
Oh, sorry. It's a pretty good film. One of my favourites. <laughs> okay, so that was, this has been out on you and Chicken Run has entered the vault. Yes. I'll do with... An like, M. An M. <laughs> As part of our... We'll do. Blo- we'll write an individual blog or like a recording, like individual audio, ten minute episode talking about our, why it goes in the vault and such on and forth. Okay, and put that somewhere later down the line. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Our Patreon page is starting to uh, take shape. Mm. Yes, it will entail uh, because we'll be doing some live stuff in theaters at some point down the line this mm. year. Yes, yes. So we're uh, very grateful to have been offered a a, a go at the three fringe. Uh, unfortunately, the three of us are in a play, which we'll discuss at a later date on the podcast, probably. But um, it just conflicts um, yeah. Yeah. with the time and the effort get needed to give to making so- get, presenting something to an audience like this show. Because I mean, obviously, we'd have to do it in a different format. And we've we've talked about ideas, and they're all great. And we're going to tr- at this point, this some point this year, we're going to try it out. Uh, yeah. But it needs to be given the time. It needs to be given. Yeah, and yeah, it, it clearly all it conflicts uh, with that with that thing. Yeah, that yeah. we have so. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, we, unfortunately, we're really happy and proud to have yeah, been of offered. Yeah, like, because some people oh, don't amazing. get a chance, and we we were very lucky to be given. Hey, there's a there's a spot, and it was a, a great venue space. Yeah, what, really that good. Was a really, I won't say what it was, but it was just at the bottom of two very big roads of uh, on in Edinburgh. Uh, I can say uh, Princess Street. It was near the bottom of Princess Street. It was off there. It was a very nice area uh, to be. I think. I think it it would be nice to do it in other smaller venues before we mm. do something that big mm. um, as well. Like, of course, it's conflicting with other stuff, but it would be nice to when we do actually go to the Free Fringe to have done it before in smaller venues. Yeah, so totally. that was our thinking as well. Totally. So, okay. yeah. So, thank you again for listening. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. We were Adam, Anouk, and Jan. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.